Good morning, everyone. My name is Philip Jones. Welcome to Let's Talk on the Second Chance. And I am Tafaro Cook, two-time kidney transplant recipient and founder of Kidney Care Coaches, where we coach people with stage three to stage five kidney disease. If you or you know someone who has kidney disease and needs to be coached on their challenges, hit us up at kidneycarecoaches.com. Uh, so today we kind of have a um, another part to our diabetes talk. Um, I surprisingly was not able to find anything um, uh, video wise on type one uh, diabetes connected to kidney disease. So um, what I did find was something to just kind of um, basically give a thumbs up to uh what mr cook said on wednesday um about type 2 diabetes and ways to uh reverse it and and you know put you in a better place so um this video is about three minutes long it's by uh, dr neil bernard uh md um again we do not own the rights to this video so uh again like i said it's about three minutes uh so sit relax and, and watch uh Dr. Bernard explained how to reverse diabetes in three uh, three steps. Many people are concerned about risk of diabetes, and many people have it already. If you have type two diabetes, though, it can be a two way street. And to begin a diet change to reverse diabetes, step one is to avoid animal products. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought I was supposed to avoid sugar or avoid bread or maybe rice. Well, these carbohydrates do release glucose into the blood and that's why people thought, okay, that sugar must be the problem. But it turns out that the real problem with diabetes is the buildup of fat inside the cells of the body. When fat builds up in your muscle cells or in your liver cells, the sugar can't get inside. And that's the problem. That's why step one is to avoid animal products because when we do, there's no animal fat in the diet at all. That helps the cells clean out. Step two, vegetable oils to a minimum. If you're the kind of person who is making dinner, and you take your bottle of oil and you go glug, 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 oil all over everything. That fat gets into your cells too, and that's a problem. So step three is choose the healthiest food. So white bread, okay, but rye bread or pumpernickel, much better. The whole grain breads are better. White potatoes are okay, but a sweet potato is much better. If you're having a breakfast cereal made for children, that's gonna raise your blood sugar, especially if the box of cereal has a toy inside. You know what I'm talking about. Have a healthier kind of something like oatmeal porridge or bran cereal, that's better for you. Instead of sugar, have fruit. Apples and bananas and peaches and peaches. These foods taste sweet, but they're very gentle on your sugar. So, step one, get away from the animal products. Step two, keep the oil very low. Step three, choose the sources of carbohydrate and over time your diabetes might start to improve now i have one last thing though let your doctor know that you're going to do this because although these steps sound very very simple they can be very very powerful and if you're taking medicine for your diabetes your blood sugar can start to fall 
too low when you're on a very healthy diet. So your doctor can reduce your medicine as the diet starts to bring your blood sugar down naturally, and that's gonna be the best part of the solution. Yeah, I think um, the bottom line of that, he just he just told, you know, about the animal fats and animal products, why he says that, and that's another one that I didn't state, but he's exactly right about that. It blocks the sugar from coming into the body, and that he's absolutely right. You know, that's why, you know, you got to watch the animal fat and things like that. And animal fat can come like in oil, but it also comes in red meat, you know, sometimes. I ain't telling people not to eat bacon and things like that, but... You know, you want to watch this stuff. Another big thing he said was the cereal, cereals that got poison. Now, that cereal with poison is what we call a refined carb. That kind of carb can make you explode as far as diabetes is concerned. It's, it's nothing but sugar. Also, again, those type of cereals, if you're on, you know, if you have a kidney challenge or anything like that, are loaded with phosphorus also. That's why if you look at one of those boxes of cereal, those boxes of cereal like that can stay on the shelf for years and years and years and, and they'll still be edible. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why is because they're loaded with phosphorus and a lot of sugar. Like he said, he said you want to eat fruits instead of eating a whole bunch of uh, sugar-laced things. Also, oatmeal things like that. And that's what my breakfast usually consists of. Probably 80% of the time I'm eating raw oats and I eat um, I eat eggs. <clears throat> now my cholesterol is really good, but I do eat eggs and I eat the, I eat the yolk. But I, I like the protein from it and it's animal fat, but I don't have a problem with diabetes. But if you did have a problem with diabetes, you might want to stay away from the, from the yolks and, and, and eggs. But eggs are really, really good for you. So that's what my breakfast looks like. It looks like, you know, either oats raw steel cut oats and eggs for the majority of the time every now and then i'll switch it up but again the animal products you got to watch it we always thought it was sugar and sugar is true you got to watch the sugar but you also have to watch your animal products as well go ahead phil uh yeah no i actually just uh started adding uh eggs uh to my breakfast as well as actually needed for uh the protein um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong, you know, for the people who have diabetes that like eggs, there's nothing wrong with eating egg whites. You know, yeah, they probably don't have, you know, the super best taste, with, you know, uh, without the yolk, you know, or anything like that. But at the end of the day, you got to think of it like this. You want to live or have flavor. Uh, taste, has to be, taste has to be, be kind of down on the low totem pole, if you will. I would hope so. Get, yeah, if you're trying to get in shape or if you're trying to lose some fat or you got a challenge with diabetes or something like that, man, taste goes out the window. I, I keep it real. You know, a lot of people can't do that, and I get it. I come from a bodybuilding background. I had no problem with eating foods that didn't taste good and things like that. As long as they did what they were supposed to do, I had no problem with it. My, my wife and my family thinks I'm the craziest eater in the world because they think I eat so bland. And I do. I eat right. really bland. And they'd be like, how do you eat like that? I'd be like, you'd be surprised what you got to train yourself to do because I look at food. Now, I like going to a nice restaurant. And I like enjoying good tasting foods and stuff like that. But that's not my really go-to. I eat foods for their nutritional value. And again, I was a personal trainer for a long period of time in my life. I trained bodybuilders and things like that. And I've always had this thought process of my food was just to, for a necessary, just to, for, for me to either build muscle, you know, get lean and things like that. I used food for, you know, even on dialysis, my food was just my nutritional value. I ate food just because it was nutritionist where a lot of people they have a mindset where oh if it ain't tasting good I can't eat it you know that's that that's that I, I want to call it juvenile mindset when it comes to nutrition the, the nutrition is about you prospering that's what your nutrition is about it's about help your nutrition should propel you your nutrition shouldn't hinder you 
And a lot of times when you see people eating in the restaurants and the places they go to and what's on their plate, everything they're eating is hindering them. It's, you know, so a lot of times we have people like, I want to, they live to eat. You know, I eat to live. So I change that around. My thought process is eating to live. Yeah, I don't, and, and I train myself where I'm not, you know, too stuck on taste and things like that. And that's a personal thing. Now, I'm not telling everybody else to be like that because a lot of people, like, again, they like, oh, if it don't taste good, I got, you know, I, I can't eat it. And that's fine. But I always train myself. To eat. My food was all about my nutritional value. And that's how I look at food. Every time I put something on my plate, every time I go somewhere, every time I eat something, I'm looking at it from a perspective of what's it going to do in my body, how it's going to fuel my brain, how it's going to fuel my life. And that's just how I do it. And I'm trained like that. Again, I've been a personal trainer. I own my own fitness studio. And so my thought process is like that. Again, there's a time and place. I have no problem eating, you know, some, some good foods every now and then. But that's far 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 reach for me usually i'm eating for my nutritional value yeah uh i kind of had the same kind of nutritional value uh when i was growing up really um you know i said my uncle was a professional bodybuilder so um you know we would still see him on like you know most of the time his competitions are on the Saturdays or something like that. Every now and again, he'd have some Sundays, Friday nights or whatever, depending on where they are. But uh, most of the time he did, he was doing meal prep before meal prep was meal prep, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He would, yeah. you know, Sundays, uh, like if we if we come over there to watch like uh, the Laker game or something like that, he'd be out, he'd be outside, uh, you know, putting his stuff on the grill, chicken breast, shrimp. Uh, yep. you know, not no thick, super thick steaks or anything like, but the thinner ones, um, you know, just to be able to get some, you know, some of that nutrition from that. He knew what um, his body not, needed. He knew what his body right. needed. He knew, he knew the macros, the micros. He had, he had his food prepared. And that's another thing. Let's talk about that. You know, when, when, when you do this, this goes back to, if you don't prepare, you prepare to fail. You know, what your uncle was doing was having his food prepared already. So if he ever got hungry, he knew he had his meal already there and he was going to eat. He didn't wait until he got hungry. Like, oh, man, what am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? Nah, he was already prepared. The challenge right. when you do, when you do have, you know, you get hungry and you don't have anything around you, the survival mechanism comes in. That means you got to eat for anything because you're starving. So therefore... Those garden arches look really, really good. Those big red signs that say Wendy's and all these fast food restaurants, they appeal to your eye, especially when you're hungry. You're just going to grab whatever is around because, right. again, when you're hungry, you go into survival mechanism. You got to eat just to survive. So it's not about, you know, what I have. But unlike that, like, like your uncle, he, his, he was prepared. So as soon as, right. he, as soon as he got hungry or whatever, he was like, okay, I'm getting this shrimp. I got some broccoli right here. I got some sweet potato. And he fed his food with those nutrients that he was supposed to have because he wanted to perform in a certain way. He wanted to perform in the, in the weight room. He wanted to sleep good. He wanted his body to do the right things when he got on the stage, everything. And that's what he did. He prepared. And that's the way you have to be if you want to, you know, overcome diabetes, if you want to overcome, you know, obesity, all of these things, you have to prepare your meals. You have to prepare, and, and not just meals, but you got to have your medicine there. You got to have everything there. If you plan on being good at dialysis and stuff, you got to have all your, okay, I got my caps, I got my lines, I got my bag. You got to prepare for anything. That goes for, you know, Phil's in college right now. Phil's like, hey, Man, I got homework. I got to prepare for this test. I got. I got. I got to get this homework done. I got to prepare for this tomorrow. That's what I'm talking about. You probably preparing tonight for it. You know, so you could be ready for it. The I've point I'm making is, week. again, in any of these things that you go through in life, this is a you know what we talked about with diabetes. The true metaphor of all these things is preparing yourself to be right. ready when you need it. Definitely, definitely, and. You know, that's not, you know, these things just go like, like Ms. Cook said, we started with something before 
oatmeal and eggs and things like that, right? This is an all-around thing. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, even your snacks. Yep. If you know you a person that likes to snack, I'm going to give you a, a tip of advice, man. Somebody has to give my dad props for Um, You know, he's trying to lose weight to be my donor and you know, so he's been, you know, trying to figure out ways to stop That's eating cool. junk food and things of that nature. Yeah. And so he knows he likes to eat snacks that crunch a lot, right? Like, you know, you like you like potato chips, you like Oreos. I do too. You know, I, things I of that too. nature. And he and and he's not like he's just saying like absolute no, you know, every now and again he'll go, you know, grab a small bag or whatever, you know, or a small pack of, of Oreos, like just like four in it or whatever. But um, what he started doing was grabbing, started, like, we go to uh, Sprouts a lot, which is, like, a, um, another version of, like, Whole Foods or mm -hmm. yep. um, a Trader Joe's, you know, places like yep. that. And uh, what, and I think it's actually maybe a little bit less expensive to go to, but um, it everybody is better. It is. You know? It is. Um, and he started, I don't know how he found out, I don't know if they had him, you know, uh, as a sample or something like that in the store or whatever, but he ended up finding uh, dried okra. And he loved them. He loved them. He, if, if he see them, he grabbed them. Sometimes he'll go to Sprouts just to buy them. You know, like if he ain't got no more, he'll go just to buy some. Uh, you know, you know how good so, for you that is, man? Okra is one of the best vegetables you could possibly eat, and he's finding it dry. And it's and it's and see that's what he did. He did his research. He's like, man, I like these. They give me that crunch. They ain't got all these preservatives in them. They ain't like chips with loaded with salt, loaded with phosphorus, and all that. And I can eat them, and I can snack on them, and I'm not messing up my nutrition, and I'm not messing up, you know, my diet. And that's what he did. He did his research and found out what what he likes, and it's for him. That's what you got to do. And that goes to everybody. You got to, everybody, be, you know, I talk to people about nutrition every day. And I get this feedback. I don't like that. It don't taste right. I don't like, dude, you got to make some substitutes. And then you got to make some sacrifices. Yeah, popcorn yeah. chips and stuff. But he sacrificed and said, look, you know what? I'll sacrifice to lose this weight. So I can, but I'll eat this okra right now. You know, and that's a sacrifice. We Sometimes we, as human beings, we have a tendency that we would just want everything, but we don't want to sacrifice for it, man. We just want it all to come to us and all on a silver platter. Here you go. It don't work like that. You got to sacrifice yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Man, if, I'm, I'm in that same uh, group, honestly, Cook, um, with certain things I don't like, you know, when it comes to foods. Like, I can't, and it's the reason why I can't stand it, but I hate tomatoes, and I know they say tomatoes are either good for your eyesight or your heart or whatever, but the thing about it is that if it was just a taste factor for me, I can get past that. I would have no problem with, with trying to incorporate that into um, my diet and things of that nature in some kind of way, whether it's, you know, salsa or just, you know, maybe eating some on, on a, a taco if I make some, you know, ground potato or whatever the case may be. I have no problem with that, you know, with, with trying to find ways to mask the taste of it and things of that nature. But the thing about tomatoes is that tomatoes actually make me throw up. They make me vomit. From the minute they, they hit the back of my throat, they coming right back up. So that's the reason why I don't, I you know, those aren't like one of those things where I could just say, you know, forget the taste. Well, I don't you, care about like them. But, but, but Phil... <laughs> Okay, we got foods we don't like. I'm not a real tomato fan. If they're on something, I could eat them a little bit, but I'm not a real big tomato fan. But not having I mean, a certain food that you like is not going to stop you from being healthy is what I'm saying. No, you know, no, no, can, and that's my point. That's what I'm saying. You know, I can get – if it's just a taste thing where it's just like, oh, these things are horrible, I can get past that. I mean, think about it. We've been doing that since since we was kids. We hate – I'm. I don't know. One adult that in their childhood liked the taste of cough medicine. <laughs> not one, right? So it's not like so, it's, it's something we haven't been doing. 
you know, are a lot either that or I don't know if you used to say this when you were younger, but Calcitrol, not Calcitrol, but uh, Castro. Castro oil. Right. Castro oil. Hated it's that nonsense. Nice. Tastes like root beer. No, no, it don't. I know what root beer tastes like. That don't taste like root beer. <laughs> Smell like root beer, but don't taste like root beer. You know, it's horrible. You know, I had to eat an orange afterwards. So it was it was the worst shit ever. But again, <coughs> the point the point I'm making. Okay, mm, tomatoes ain't got big in your diet. Yeah, they're good for your prostate things like that. But tomatoes ain't gonna one food. I'm gonna say one food from anybody. Like okay, I just don't like this. I get it. There's gonna be foods that people don't like. But that's not gonna stop you from getting in shape. That's not gonna stop you from, you know, getting, you know, uh losing some fat. That's what I'm saying. So but I'm done with this. That was a good video. I'm done with it. Go ahead, bro. Do your thing. I'm done, man. I'm done. Uh we'll be back on Sunday. Um a little earlier time, uh five o'clock Eastern, um two o'clock Pacific. Um, most of the people who, who may watch on uh on LinkedIn, that that podcast and or pay attention to a lot of podcasts and know who DJ is, um, and you know uh, Air Force Vet podcast uh, host, um, advocate for mental uh, mental illness awareness and things of that nature. Um, so she'll be on uh, Sunday, um, and then earlier in the day I'll be on uh, with my good friends at Kidney Trails. Uh, Dwellin Woods and uh, uh, Anthony Reed will be behind the scenes producing the show. Um, but uh, Dwellin's partner, his name is uh, Richard, I believe, Rich or Richard. Um, don't know his last name, but um, watched the show last week, it was real good. Uh, looking forward to being on. Um, and then also another LinkedIn uh, show will be uh, uh, Jenny Gold and myself and, and Tafaro will be on. Uh, Tuesday the fifteenth. Uh, so definitely looking forward to that as well. So um, you know, if you haven't seen on LinkedIn, uh, Jenny just did was a part of um, a twenty four hour uh, campaign uh, where they tried to wear raise awareness for um, cancer patients and things of that nature. So um, hope all that went well to uh, Tim and, and Jenny, and it was a Number of, I think DJ was a part of that as well. Um, so hope hope uh, you had some good results from that. Um, but other than that, we getting out of here. Uh, you know, we, we don't try to keep you out here for years, unlike on Sundays. Sundays we try to take all the time possible not playing. Um, <laughs> no, but again, we'll see you on Sunday. What do you say, Cook? I said no, you ain't playing. You tell the truth. No, nah, I'm not. I, I want all your t- all your time, all the attention. All the love, all the support. I want it all. I want all the likes and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Well, that's all included. I mean, you know, that support, that support phrase is, is definitely for those likes and subscribe. Uh, but we definitely need those, you know. Uh that again, like that does support, but you know, we need y'all to hit that uh subscribe button, share it, like it, comment when you can. Um, you know, we, we definitely appreciate when you uh you check in with us and and you know join the conversation um what, what a lot of people don't understand is that when you join the conversations of you know these shows or our sunday shows you liven up uh the show a little bit we're getting those outside comments and things of that nature and you know finding out you know we we like to hear what you're thinking and what you've been through and you know how you could compare to who we have on the show or you know what you may want to see in the future you know we definitely listen to that too so let us know uh we definitely like to hear all that stuff whether it's in the comments or you have us on social media if you don't find us on social media um either second chance or philip jones or Farl cook or kidney care coach um you know try to put one of those in um on, on these social media apps and you'll find us find one of those names uh, with our picture next to it. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk to you again. Like you said, like, subscribe, share, comment. Uh, and we appreciate you all. We'll see you on Sunday.